In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to calculate the portfolio standard deviation for a portfolio equally weighted in these seven securities based on historical data. Before we get into it, it's probably useful to go ahead and look at the formula for calculating a portfolio variance. And if we look down here at the bottom line, this formula may look pretty familiar as the formula that's seen in pretty much every finance textbook out there. And what it's showing you is how to calculate this blended variance for a two security portfolio. All right. And most of us would probably want to have a little bit more diversification than two securities. Now, the reason why they show you two securities is as soon as I add a third, I have to add two more of these covariance terms in there to account for the correlation of the securities in the portfolio. Now, when you have three, it's not too bad, right? The formula gets a little longer, a little harder to implement. But when you get seven, you actually have 21 of these covariance terms out here that you would need to include. Not impossible to implement, but a lot more difficult uh, than with a smaller portfolio. But if we look up here at the top, we can see the variance is actually derived from this matrix math where we take this vector of weights multiply it by a matrix of variances and covariances for each of the securities, and then multiply all that by the weights once again. This is the one we're going to be implementing in Excel here today, and we're going to be using the mmult function to do that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do then is calculate the individual volatilities, and I have collected data going back about a year here, and I calculated the instantaneous rate of return for each of these securities going back that year. And uh, to do the variance or standard deviation calculation, I'm going to name these ranges to simplify things. So in the formula tab, I select create from selection. And then, yes, the names are in the top row. So I click OK. And now I'm ready to calculate a standard deviation, which is going to be the square root of the variance. And it's a variance of a sample. And so I can use those names that I just made. I'm going to use this indirect function. And since that's a daily variance, I'm going to multiply everything by 252, uh, the number of trading days in a year. So with the first one done, I can just copy down. Okay, and if we could ignore the correlations between the stocks, we could simply do a weighted volatility here. So I could use some product. And we find that, okay, the volatility of equally weighted ignoring correlations is about 47%. All right, and I should note that, yeah, these volatilities are pretty high. We're living in quite volatile times as, as of this uh, video. And uh, yeah, you would probably expect going forward to see the S&P 500 at least uh, settle down quite a bit and, and probably even gold would settle down quite a bit. All right. Some of these others, uh, it's hard to say. All right. But if we want them all represented in the portfolio, uh, we're going to see what kind of volatility we could expect if the current trend continues into the future. Okay. So we're going to need to then get our variance covariance matrix. To do that, I'm going to go back to the data sheet and I'm going to go to the data tab and I'm going to use the data analysis tool pack to calculate the covariance. Now I could do the correlation, but since eventually I have to get to covariance, I'm just going to start there, simplify things a bit. Okay, so I select the range of the data. I tell it that the labels are in the first row. And then I indicate where I want the result output. Okay, so you can see that, okay, Excel, when it does this, it fills in the half matrix, all right, where, okay, we don't need to see the duplicate values, or that's what they are telling us. Uh, to make our calculation work, though, we actually do need these duplicate values up here. All right, so I'm going to have to fill them in, and probably the easiest way to do that is going to be by using the array function transpose. And then I'm just going to transpose each column across each row. All right, since it's an array function, to execute it, I'm going to hold Shift and Control and press Enter. Okay, so I'll just quickly fill in the rest.
Okay, with our array uh, completely filled in, we are now ready to go ahead and calculate our portfolio standard deviation. So that is going to be, again, using an array function, m mult matrix multiplication. All right, and I actually have to multiply first the 1 by 7 of the weights transposed by the 7 by 7 matrix of the variances and covariances. And once that's done, I will multiply that resulting 1 by 7 by a 7 by 1 to get this single cell volatility. All right, so I'm going to nest the M mult inside this. The first argument for the first calculation is the transpose, and it's the transposition of these weights. Okay, the second argument there is the matrix. Okay, and once we get the result of that, we're just going to multiply it by the weights again. Okay, and the order of this does matter. Okay, so that's going to give us the variance. It's going to give us a daily variance. So I'm going to multiply everything by 252. And then uh, we're going to wrap the whole thing in the square root function to end up with our final volatility. So it's an array function. To execute it, I have to hold Control and Shift and press Enter. Okay, so we can see that when we account for the correlations of these individual securities, it reduces by, it looks like about 30 or 40 percent, uh, the volatility from the simple weighted average. Okay, so with this in hand, you can go ahead and use this to do things like calculate value at risk, or you could try to calculate a, an optimal portfolio based on some maximization of sharp ratio. Okay, and I have videos for both of those topics, and I will leave links for those in the description of this video. So I hope that helps calculating a portfolio standard deviation.